This week, AMD officially announced what the rumors have predicted. New CPUs for the AIM4 socket. AMD is preparing an additional 6 CPUs to be launched on top of the already announced Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. I am sure you have heard all about it by now, but I don't want to talk about just the specs of the new CPUs and instead try to take a look at the possible reasons for this move by AMD. Which chips will AMD be using? Is the lineup a reaction to Intel's great price performance offerings with their entry-level Auto Lake CPUs? Or is AMD AMD just trying to get rid of their old AM4 CPUs before AM5 is being released. Let's take a look. One of the main complaints about Zen 3, aside from the initial availability, was the CPU lineup, as it was cut down from Zen 2. With Zen 3, AMD released only four different SKUs. Compared to the Zen 2 release, the lack of a 5700X and a 5600 non-X and smaller entry-level CPUs was apparent from the very beginning. But with the announcement AMD just made, the whole lineup is going to drastically change. AMD is releasing the CPUs everyone was missing from the Zen 2 days. Back then the 3700X and the 3600 were among the more popular CPUs. They just made more sense. Heck, my 3600 is still performing amazingly, not only in gaming, but also in application workloads like DaVinci Resolve. It's safe to say that the new 5700X and the 5600 have the potential to become the best value Zen 3 CPUs all over again. The 5600 is essentially the same as the 5600X, just clocking 200MHz lower, and the same is true when you compare the 5800X to the 5700X. Both CPUs have 8 cores with 16 threads and the same 32MB of L3 cache. The only difference is a 100MHz boost clock and a 400MHz base clock reduction. And while the 5800X was the hottest of the Zen 3 CPUs, the 5700X with its reduced 65 watt TDB probably won't have the same issue. In my opinion, once the 5600 and the 5700X are launched, there is little to no reason to go for the more expensive, bigger brothers. The Ryzen 5 5500 on the other hand is a very interesting choice. It offers the same 6 cores and 12 threads as the 5600, a 200MHz lower boost clock but a 100MHz higher base clock. So what's the difference? It's the chip AMD is using. The 5600 is based on the Vimeer die, which is used in all other Zen 3 Ryzen CPUs. They offer 32MB of L3 cache per chiplet. But the 5500 is based on AMD's Cezanne. It's the same Zen 3 architecture as Vermeer but only offers half the L3 cache with 60MB. If you add the 512 kilobytes of L2 cache per core on top, you get the 90 megabytes of total cache AMD is stating in their slide. Cezanne has an integrated Vega GPU, which is deactivated in the 5500. It's essentially a slightly lower clocked 5600G without the iGPU. If we look at benchmarks comparing the 5600G, we can see that the 5600X is almost 25% faster in games. And since the upcoming 5600 non-X should be very similar in performance to the 5600X, I would estimate a 20% performance difference between the 5500 and the 5600 in gaming. Of course, games are really cache sensitive, so when it comes to other applications, the performance difference isn't that large. I would guess that the 5500 will be around 5 to 10% slower than the 5600 in applications. I can see AMD's value proposition here. First of all, they finally have a product where they can sell their Cezanne chips that come with a defective iGPU. So far, all Cezanne based products have had an active iGPU. On top of that, if you are in the market for a CPU that's not primarily meant for gaming, the 5500 should perform really close to the 5600X or 5600 at a lower MSRP. If you already have a dedicated GPU in your system, this might be a decent upgrade, especially if you are on an older 300 or 400 series mainboard with a Ryzen 1000 or 2000 CPU. And let's not forget that Cezanne isn't bad in gaming, it's just not as amazing as Vermeer. The 5500 should perform on the level of a Ryzen 5 3600, which is still plenty powerful. I still would pay the extra $40 to get the 5600 with the full L3 cache, but if your budget is tight and you do stuff besides gaming, it has a place in AMD's lineup. It gets even more interesting because AMD isn't only releasing new Ryzen 5000 CPUs, they are also going to introduce three new Zen 2 based Ryzen 4000 chips. These should be all based on AMD's Renoir design, but heavily binned. On paper, Renoir offers up to 8 CPU cores and integrated Vega graphics. Renoir was released about 2 years ago in early 2020 and sports 10 billion 7 nanometer transistors on a 156mm squared die. The new Ryzen 5 4600G comes with 6 cores, 12 threads and an active iGPU. 
Renoir APUs have only 4 MB of L3 cache per CCX, so with both CCX active that's a total of 8 MB for the 4600G and thus only a quarter of a comparable Zen 2 CPU which offers 60 MB per CCX. The Ryzen 5 4500 has the same amount of cores and cache, only this time the iGPU is also deactivated and the Ryzen 3 4100 is the most binned version with one CCX completely disabled and thus only 4 MB of L3 cache. Oh, and the iGPU is also deactivated. This is a very serious binning from the full Renoir, which comes with 8 cores and iGPU. Again, I'm really surprised AMD has enough of those shift laying around to release entire SKUs with bin parts. TSMC's N7 node is supposed to be pretty good in terms of yield, and it's not like Renoir is a huge chip. I can see the value proposition for the 4600 g even though it's similar device to the 5500. With the active iGPU, it should be a really good office APU, but it's not a chip I would buy for gaming. The 5500 will smoke it there. The 4500 and 4100 are really tough sell in my opinion. They lack the iGPU, so they aren't great for an office PC because you need a discrete GPU on top. Yes, if you already have one and need a cheap CPU to go with it, it might work, but then again the 5500 is only $30 more than the 4500 and considerably faster. The 4100 with only 4 MB of a 3 cache is even worse. When AMD released Gen 3, they streamlined the whole lineup, only releasing the parts they really had to, and it would be a lie to say it wasn't successful. At the time of release, Gen 3 was the fastest CPU out there, best for single thread and multi-core, amazing power efficiency, and a mature platform on top. Consumers wanted more value SKUs from the very beginning, but AMD did not respond. Well until now, and I'm having a hard time to make sense of all of this, or at least of some of those announcements. The 5700X and 5600 are great products that make a lot of sense. AMD is simply offering slightly lower clock versions of the existing 5800X and 5600X with better price performance to counter some of the pressure Intel has been putting on with their fairly priced entry-level Autodex CPUs. Customers with older Ryzen CPUs on compatible 300 and 400 series mainboards might rather have a drop-in CPU than spend more on an entire new system. And using Cezanne with a deactivated iGPU as a entry-level 6 core 5500 also makes sense. AMD can use their Cezanne dies with a defective iGPU, it's still decent for gaming and really close to a 5600 in other applications. The release of new Ryzen 4000 branded CPUs was quite surprising to me and while I can make sense of a 4600G which comes with an iGPU, I honestly fail to understand the reasoning behind the 4500 and 4100. Who would spend $130 on a Ryzen 5 4500 for an office PC if you can get a new Core i3-12100 with a working iGPU for the same price, especially in today's market where discrete GPUs are still plenty expensive. If you are a gamer, you are better off buying a used Ryzen 5 3600 or even the new 5500 as the low L3 cache amount of Renoir has a big impact on its gaming performance. And if you buy it for an office PC, you are missing the iGPU. AMD must have quite a few defective Renoir chips still sitting around to actually release new SKUs based on these designs. And in combination with allowing BIOS updates for older 300 and 400 series mainboards, it looks a lot like AMD is trying to get rid of their older Zen 2 based stocks right before Zen 4 launches and Zen 3 drops into the bracket Zen 2 currently is in. If I had to guess the reasoning behind AMD's announcements, I would classify the 5700X and the 5600 as necessary counters to Intel and all other chips as a way to clear the stockpiles before Zen is launching. Basically, AMD is tackling two objectives with one lineup change. That's why the product seems so different. So there you have it, my analysis of AMD's new socket AM4 CPUs. It's cool that AM4 actually turned out to be one of the longest lasting sockets in recent memory, especially with the upcoming BIOS updates for many older mainboards. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and see you in the next video.